Stardew Valley 1.6 has finally hit. With it, we have new items known as trinkets. In this video, I am going to show you every single trinket you can get and how to use each one. I'm also going to show you some crazy combinations you can do with these trinkets towards the end of the video. The first thing we need to access is the Cave of Mastery. Before we can get into the cave, all of our skills need to be maxed out at 10. Once all of our skills have been maxed out, we will get a new skill called Mastery. Mastery is a culmination of all of our skills in one. So basically, if we do farming, mining, foraging, fishing, or combat, all of that excessive XP will go into our Mastery Gauge. One of the fastest ways to increase Mastery, in my opinion, is either go into the Skull Caverns with bombs and just start blowing up Iridium nodes, or have huge farms of crops. The more Mastery levels you achieve, torting up to 5, the more XP you need to get each Mastery level. So Combat Mastery here is very interesting, it gives us the Anvil, the Mini Forge, but more interestingly, it unlocks the use of a trinket, and there's a trinket slot right there on my screen, just beside my hat slot, and there's about 8 trinkets you can get in this game. We've got the Parrot Egg, the Golden Spur, the Green Frog Egg, the Bastless Paw, the Magic Hair Gel, Fairy Box, Ice Rod, there's also a Magic Quiver as well, that I'll show you later on in the video. Each of these trinkets serve very unique purposes. What's more, in order for us to reforge these trinkets, we need to make an anvil. It's just 50 iron bars and you get that recipe once you unlock the combat mastery. Now, some trinkets can be reforged, others can't. And when I say reforged, it just means slightly altering the stats on these trinkets. Take a look at the ice rod. It shoots an orb of ice every three and a half seconds, freezing any enemies for over three seconds. If we have three iridium bars, we can just put that ice rod into the anvil and it will reforge it, randomizing its stats. So let's get the ice rod back now to see what kind of stats have been reworked. If we go back into the ice rod, it now shoots an orb every 4.1 seconds and freezes the enemy every 2 seconds. So it's actually worse now. So you do use up quite an amount of iridium bars to rework these trinkets exactly the way you want them. You could get lucky and you might get your desired rolls on the first or second try. But my advice, bring plenty of Iridium Bars with you to the Anvil if you're looking for a specific trinket setup. Now that's just the Ice Rod there, but other trinkets act a bit differently and we'll get to that in just a few minutes. Let's try out the Ice Rod now just to show you how it works. It fires orbs of ice passively, so there's no buttons you have to press on, all you have to do is just equip it. It will freeze and stop any enemy in the game, doesn't matter what it is, doesn't matter what cave you're in, if it's an enemy, if it has ill intent for you, it will freeze an enemy in place. Even if you get close to the enemy, it won't retaliate. You can attack that enemy as many times as you wish. No problem at all. No harm will come to you. The orb can also freeze an unlimited amount of enemies that are caught within its path of fire. As we can see here now, it's freezing multiple enemies at once. It can even freeze the armored bugs. Next up, let's talk about the Magic Quiver. Shoots a magic arrow at nearby enemies every 1.7 seconds, dealing 27 to 32 damage. We can reforge that, and every reforge means that it will change how often it fires arrows, and it will also change how much damage it will do. So we just got back a reforge there, and it's now every 1.4 seconds, but it deals 15 to 20 damage. So you can reforge these trinkets as many times as you want, you know, until you come out with the desired output. Normally, if it's going to fire very quickly, it will do reduce damage, so it kind of balances itself out. The arrow is very handy though, especially at kind of taking off bits and pieces of damage from enemies. I mean, you can finish them up quite quickly. We're just going to go into the starter caves here, just to show you how effective it is at the starter enemies. It's not too bad, and it will pack in most of the starter enemies in one or two shots. Um, now, obviously, by the time you get this quiver, you're not going to be in the starter versions of the mines. You're going to be doing called cavern runs. You're going to be in the quarry cave, you're going to be doing the hardened versions of the mines. Let's see how well it fares up against these red slimes. As we can see, it has a small area of impact. It does a very small AOE up on impact, so it can hit multiple enemies at once if those enemies are grouped up together. The best thing about this is that it will identify crabs. As we can see, I didn't even know that was a crab enemy, but you can fool the magic quiver very handy for picking out enemies in the sky, so the crabs can't get a jump on you if you're mining up ores. So the magic quiver is really cool, but it's not the best trinket around. There's way handier trinkets than that, and we're going to get to those in a second. Let's talk about the basilisk paw. This can't be reforged, it just means you're immune to debuffs. There isn't a whole lot of debuffs in this game that would warrant you to equip this. The only enemy that I could think of 
is that toxic ghost inside the hardened version of the mines that prevents you from eating healables um, for a couple of minutes. That's the only kind of time I'd consider putting this on. I mean, I know the slimes can slow you down, but normally you're going to kill them anyway in a couple of strikes. The ghosts in the hardened version of the mines, though, can be way tougher. So because that just makes you immune to debuffs, it, it can't be reworked. There's no other stats we can reroll on it. We also have the magic hair gel. Now, this, as far as I know, is just an aesthetic. It basically just gives your hair and your facial hair the prismatic effect, so it just turns into different colours. But if there is any other effects, could you please let me know in the comments? I have scoured the wiki, but there isn't much information out at the moment because the patch is quite new. So if anybody has any extra info on it, let me know in the comments. I would greatly appreciate it. That's basically it. It would probably go quite well if you had the prismatic shirt and the prismatic pants. But as far as trinkets are concerned, it's quite useless and it can't be reforged either. It doesn't have any sort of combat capabilities like the rest of the trinkets have. Next up, we are going to talk about the Fairy Box. This trinket is quite cool. It summons a level 4 fairy. That level can be altered if we reforge it. And the fairy will basically heal you if you've taken damage. It can be quite useful if you're doing big skull cavern runs and you're slamming down ladders and you, something hits you every couple of floors. The fairy will just heal you along the way. Now, I have discovered the level 1, 2, 3 and 4 fairy. I have read a couple of posts that people have come across the level 5 fairy. I have reworked this trinket about 10 to 15 times. I haven't got the level 5. So if you can get a level 5 fairy, just let me know in the comments. And the greater the level of the fairy, the more it will heal you for. As we can see, it's healing me there for 5s and 6s and 8s. And sometimes it can give me a heal for an 11. Um, it doesn't give you massive healing. But it is quite good for damage mitigation. Especially if you take a wallop off something. The fairy will keep you in the fight a little bit longer. Also worth noting too that all of the trinkets I have found I've gotten through battle. I've gotten them from killing enemies. I've gotten them out of barrels, out of crates. I've gotten them from chests inside this skull cavern. As far as I know, there isn't any other way you can get trinkets in this game. Primarily, it's through dungeon crawling you're going to come across all of these trinkets. Next up, let's talk about the green frog egg. This thing is absolutely amazing. This frog can one-shot any enemy in the game, I kid you not. It may look like a small, harmless pet following you around the place, but I'm going to show you tons of examples just to showcase how overpowered this frog is. He just eats up monsters, just like that. He just swallows them whole. He turns really big, and after about, I'd say, 20 seconds, he will turn small again, and he will gobble up another monster. There is absolutely nothing in this game that can defend itself against the onslaught of this frog. It is an absolutely amazing trinket, one of the best trinkets by far out of all the eight trinkets I've come across. Let's take a look at these floaty skulls. Just like that, one shot it, poses no threat. It doesn't matter how much HP the enemy has, it doesn't matter how big or small the enemy is. Now I'm going to do a little test here. At the moment we've 3,762 slimes. I want to see if the frog gobbles up an enemy, will it count towards the monster eradication goal? So we just add a slime there and we go back, it's still 3,762. So just to showcase that the frog will not help you towards monster eradication goals. So if you are trying to destroy a certain number of enemies, my advice, don't take the frog out. I know he will eat the enemy, but you don't get drops off the enemy and you also won't get the enemy kill. He's just really useful if you just want to explore and you just don't want to fight any enemies. You can just take him out, you just gobble up things, no problem. It's also worth noting too that if he gobbles up an enemy and you unequip the trinket and re-equip it, you won't gobble up another enemy even though he's small. He does have a global cooldown, so you will have to wait the full 20 or so seconds before he'll gobble up more enemies, no problem. As we can see, we're inside the Skull Cavern, we're just fighting some serpents there. He gobbled it up, no problem at all. He'll also gobble up the armoured bugs that are more or less invincible. No hassle at all to our furry little friend. He'll also gobble up any of the ghosts. He will basically gobble up anything. The mummies, they're not instructable to this guy. He'll just gobble them up. <laughs> he will gobble up everything. I know I sound like a broken record player, but he will literally gobble up anything that poses a threat. Even the mummies trying to regenerate after you destroy them. He'd gobble him up, no problem. <laughs> He's just so overpowered. The massive giant serpents in the hardened versions of the Skull Cavern, he'd gobble him up, no problem. The giant blobs, he'd gobble him up, no problem. This frog is just amazing. As we can see, I just killed him there, I got another fairy box. Just to show you that this is how you get most of the trinkets, you just have to destroy enemies. 
that's a level 2 fairy but you can get lucky when the trinkets drop they get re-rolled for you let's talk about the golden spur every time you get a critical strike it'll give you a speed buff now cr the critical strike builds in this game aren't very popular normally people go with the sword or they go with the hammer a lot of people don't really go with the dagger builds because it, you know they're very kind of single target and all of the end game stuff in Sarju Valley it's normally just mobs of enemies but we'll try the golden spur and we'll see it can be reforged to give you the speed buff a little bit longer I have rings equipped to increase my critical strike chance and I also have the Iridium Needle as well that has a very high crit strike chance. The Needle itself is quite an amazing weapon. If it crits the enemy is just going to die. Nothing's going to save it. As we can see I get plus one speed and my character does move considerably faster. Now you could go all in on this build. You could equip a ring that every time you kill an enemy you go faster that would stack. You can also drink a triple shot espresso for increased movement speed. You can take food like a magic rock candy or a spicy eel for more movement speed and you could end up having a character that's lightning fast now i saved the best trinket for last the parrot egg this thing is absolutely overpowered it is crazy and i think concerned AF will eventually nerf this it's just broken so we can rework this at the forge okay and it's going to summon a different level parrot you've got parrots one two three and four now you also have a parrot level five the parrot will basically allow enemies to drop gold when they're defeated the amount of gold doesn't vary but the consistency of which enemies will drop gold depends on the level of the parrot that you have so i have a parrot trinket level five there so the enemies do drop gold quite a lot i've put my money down to zero just to do a test and i'm going to spend the whole day in the mines killing just regular enemies dust sprites i'm also going to kill bugs and everything in between it doesn't matter what kind of enemies they are they will drop a staggering amount of gold upon the feet it doesn't matter if it's a bug or if it's a mummy inside the skull caverns it will still drop more or less the same amount of gold so the best way to abuse this trinket and get yourself tons of money is to go into the early levels of the mines take a monster musk and just spend the whole day wiping out enemies you're going to get an absolute ton of gold i have made i kid you not over a hundred thousand gold using this parrot and just killing enemies for the whole day like i'm only doing this for a few hours i already have eighteen thousand gold the parrot is just broken it's absurdly broken i just want to say again a huge thanks to all my channel members and if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet could you hit that subscribe button it would really help me out i'd greatly appreciate it i hope you all have a wonderful day stay tuned for my big 100 day video i'm in the process of editing it at the moment it's going to hit in the next couple of days it's going to be a real good video it's going to showcase a lot of the 1.6 content thanks again for watching and i'll see you soon everyone bye for now